times a negative. Divide it by a negative? Negative. So everywhere I have all three negatives, this, the f of x, is going to be negative. And that happens until I get to 2. Okay? When I get to 2, I have 0 times a negative divided by a negative. Because it's this factor times this factor divided by this factor. What is 0 times a negative divided by a negative? 0. So at 2, it's 0. In between 2 and 3, in between 2 and 3, I have a positive times a negative on top. What's a positive times a negative? Negative. negative. What's a negative divided by a negative? negative. Positive. positive. So in between 2 and 3, this function is positive. Okay? At 3, I have a positive times a negative, which is? Negative. Divided by 0, which is? Zero. No? Divided by 0, not multiplied oh, by 0. Uh, undefined, which is my asymptote. Okay, between 3 and 4, I have a positive times a negative, which is? Negative. Divided by a positive, which is? Negative. Still negative. Well, I thought the only solution for 2 and 4. Is weird? We're almost there. It is weird, but hang on a sec. Roll with me a second longer. At 4, I have a positive times 0. Zero. Divided by a positive? Zero. Zero. So I don't really care what these numbers are as long as I know when they're positive or negative. And then when it's greater than 4, I have a positive times a positive, positive. divided by a positive. 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 So what can this kind of like showing the table in your calculator? Pardon? This is kind of like your table in your calculator. This is kind of like your table in your calculator. So I know it's a, it's a lot like a table in your calculator, actually. So the entire function I know has to be negative then zero, then positive, then an asymptote, then negative, then zero, then positive. So combine, sorry. Yeah, combine this with knowing where the, where the asymptotes and where the slant asymptote is, I think I can draw this. Yes? Go ahead. Then why is there something more than two and four? Uh, the three, the asymptote. Okay, so you just don't worry about it? Uh, the asymptote, I do worry about it, but it's not one of my, it's not one of my solutions. Okay. But I'm going to need to know if I'm going to graph it. The whole point is how to graph this. If you do this, is the asymptote always going to be in the middle? No. It's totally random. If I put x minus 12 on the bottom, the asymptote would be way out here. just depends on, I just happen to make it that way. And I've got to pick my scale on this graph. I mean, Amy already discovered that the, her calculator was looking really funny on this because I put all of my zeros and asymptotes so close together. So I'll pick the scale for you on the test. But just so you know, picking the scale can be interesting. Um, you want to see what I did? Uh, in a minute. I want to see what I can do first. <laughs> Wish me luck. Okay. Now I want to graph this thing. Um, it seems like all the exciting stuff is happening between 2 and 4. So I'm going to pick a scale. I'm going to graph like this. And I'm going to use a very large scale on the x-axis, and I'm going to clump things up a little more on the y. So I make that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the x, on the y. What was my slant asymptote? Uh, x minus 3. Okay, so that should be fine. Remember, you don't have to have the same scale on the x as on the y, but you have to have the same scale consistently on the y and consistently on the x. Really? Yeah. So I, I, can, make, I can make this one... Counting by bigger two, and than that one counting by I can make this one counting by 27 and this one counting by 52, but if this one counts by 27, everything on the x-axis has to count by 27. I have to be consistent on each axis, but I can put a different scale on the x than on the y. Okay. See, I've made this one fairly small and this one slightly larger. Okay, so my, I have an asymptote, a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, correct? Mm -hmm. I have a slant asymptote of x minus 3, slope of 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, there we go, which is going to look like that. Okay, so the function, as we get further away from x equals 3, the function's got to snuggle up to this. Um, okay. The function has to snuggle up to this asymptote. The function has to snuggle up to this asymptote. And I know that when we're greater than, where are my zeros? Two and four. 
Two and four. Oh, that's going to be a little bit exciting. Okay, that changes the shape a little bit. Okay, so it's got to switch from positive to negative here, and it's got to snuggle up to both these asymptotes. I think that's the only way that can happen. Is this the only way the function can snuggle up to this and this and still have a zero here? No. Yeah. It's got to look something like that. Okay, between, let's see, between this zero and three. Okay, between three and four, it has to be negative. And boom, between three and four, it's negative. What about between 3 and 2? Is it positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So it must come down like this, cross through here, and then it's, I guess it's got to start snuggling up to this one. Where did we find the y-intercept? Negative 8 thirds, was that right? Mm -hmm. And that's 2 and 2 thirds, so that's right there. So can this function look anything other than something like this? It can look something, it can, can it look different than this? It can it look like in the other direction? Like up here? Yeah. No, it can't. Because we found it has to have, we found it has to be zero at four. Mm -hmm. So it's got to go from negative to positive around four. It can't be up here and be negative between three and four. Our sign analysis said it had to be negative between three and four, so that's down here. But I don't understand that. Like the, like the timeline. Like I Okay, this x minus 2 is negative for every single number you can imagine less than 2. Right. That's what this represents. Yeah. And x minus 4 is negative for every single number less than 4. And x minus 3 is negative for every single number less than 3. Right, but I don't understand. The so f of x. But 0, would it, is, are you saying that like x equals 2 and then you're putting it on the number line? Yes, this is a, these are x values. These are x values in each of these factors. And these are how these x values will play out when we combine them in, in the function. But I don't understand why there's a zero on top. Here? Yeah. That's just to help me line them up. Oh. This is just zero, two, three, four. This is not a zero of a function. This is a zero on the number line. Okay, but the bottom is a zero of the function. This, yeah, the bottom, these are zeros of the function. And these are the zeros of the and factors. Then, and then the top is the number line. Correct. Okay. Top is the number line, bottom is the values. Okay. Should have made that clear. Is there a way to find this plan bottom asymptote using sign analysis? Then you'd have it completely. Then you could do everything off the sign analysis. Correct. Uh, I can't think of one. No. Maybe. No. Your graph is a little bit wrong. I think it's a little bit ugly. I don't think it's wrong. <laughs> um, oh, this thing's drawing the asymptote. My scale is way off compared to yours. Let's see if I can make this look a little bit more like that. See how I go to like this. What I did was I... Um, oh my God, look at that. You got negative 30 and 30 on the y-axis. So that's going to make it look different. Fair. Let's see this a second. I I can make it look like mine. Did, he, did you just say you fair? No, I said be fair. Oh. Okay, does that look a little more like mine now? No. No. See, I changed this to... Uh, oh, negative 5 to 5, which matches what I have up here, which is about now I negative 4 to 5 up here. If you change the scale, you can stretch it like silly putty, make it look like all sorts of things. Okay? So, guys, do you have one of these without, um, on the next test, you have to do one of these. You guys think you can break a problem down like this? Obviously, it's going to be one that can be factored. Can it be this problem? Can it be this problem? Let me think of it. Whatever no. one's in the middle is the asymptote. Pardon? Whatever one's in the middle of the No, that won't always happen. Whatever one, whatever one creates the bottom. Remember, this number line represents, these first two number lines represent the top. This bottom number line represents the denominator.